Hmm. That's kind of interesting. And these cells have the ability to regenerate. What does that tell me? They have the ability to carry out what process? If they're going to regenerate, meaning one cell makes two, two makes four, four makes eight, they're carrying out the process of what? Mitosis. All right? So these cells, they got a lot going on. They're kind of busy. When we look at their basement membrane, this is going to be part of the extracellular fluid, the extracellular component. Here's what I like. This basement membrane that it's sitting on is going to be connective tissue. So I've got connective tissue, which is a certain type of cell in its own matrix. And then I've got my epithelial cells, which are in their own matrix. And look what they do. They both give off secretion. So that means stuff kind of oozes out of the cell, and it makes a glue, causing this epithelial cell to stick to the membrane. Does that make sense? <clears throat> this will help in times of, for example, tissue repair. Think about getting a cut or some damage to somewhere on your body. Hopefully it heals. All right, that, that's hopefully what's going to happen. We'll also see that in some areas, <clears throat> for example, the nephron of the kidney, <clears throat> we're going to have a similar structure and it's going to be important <clears throat> for Moving materials. Ah. Hmm. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Not all epithelium has the membrane, <clears throat> but the majority of it does. <clears throat> the function of epithelial tissue protects the underlying structures. If skin is part of this epithelial tissue, skin, our first line of defense, protecting everything underneath it. Membranes, for example, which are part of the epithelia, are going to be important. For example, if they say lining the mouth, that helps with, you know, the everything we get exposed to in the outside environment. We've got mucous membranes that are lining these orifices that lead to the outside environment. They're really good at acting as a barrier. Keeping the stuff out that wants to get in. Because as I look right now, up there at that light, and I see everything swirling in it, I know I'm breathing it in. All right? The body doesn't want that. It will have ways to try to get rid of it. Once again, they're noting the kidneys because it's going to be an important part, like I said, movement of materials. We can have some of this secrete something, like the pancreas secreting digestive juices to go into the digestive system. It could be functioning to help absorb, such as what we see with the small intestines. When we talk about the class of epithelial, classifications that exist in this, this 
class, this grouping of epithelial, it's going to sound really odd for what this stuff is telling you. All right? Here's what you're going to learn to do. Take the terms apart. For example, if I were to say pseudostratified cuboid uh, columnar cells, you're going to see stuff like that. All right? You want to begin to take the terminology apart because the terminology will let you know what you're looking at. If you see the term simple, simple is letting you know one layer of cells. What I've drawn over here is one layer. So you would look at this and it would start, you would start out by saying simple. What shape have I drew them in? What kind? And if I look at my terminology, what other term could I give square? Cube. Cube. So what I've done is I have drawn simple cuboidal. If it says stratified, more then one layer is present. So you might have a second layer, third layer, fourth layer. The cells would be just basically stacked on top of each other. Pseudo stratified. What does the term pseudo mean? False. And if we just learned stratified means more than one layer, it looks like layers, but they're not. They're false. It's only one layer, but they give the appearance of more. Like, for example, pseudostratified columnar cells of the intestines. We also note their shape, which I've already kind of said. We can have simple squamous stratified squamous. Do you see how I'm going with this? Simple cuboidal, stratified cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified, do you see how I'm going with this? Okay. So squamous, they look like fried eggs. That's how the cell looks. Cuboidal, just like their name implies. They look like a square, look like a cube. Columnar, just like the name implies, they look like a huge rectangle. So, as we begin to talk about the body, we're going to find we can have simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar. One layer of the fried eggs, one layer of the squares, one layer of the rectangles. I can have stratified, meaning two or more layers. I can have stratified squamous, the ones that look like fried eggs. If I do, they will be termed non-keratinized or keratinized. Keratin. Ever heard of that term? All right. What does it make you think about? Hair. Hair. Because it's kind of like... One of those things that they tell us is a protein, and it'll help to strengthen it, right? So, that, those two right there, are going to be very important when we begin to talk about the integumentary system, which I tried to start a few minutes ago. Just so. Now, I can have stratified cuboidal, but it's extremely rare in the body. You're only going to find it in one or two places. I can have stratified columnar, which is even more rare. So under the stratified, the one that tends to be the most prevalent in the body is the, fly, uh, the little fried eggs. 
Pseudostratified only get in colonum. You will see pseudostratified columnar cells in the digestive system, in the intestines. There is a, a, a group that exists called transitional epithelium. It can make a transition between what looks like squamous to roughly cuboidal to columnar. So when it's not stretched, it looks like little fried eggs. But when it stretches, it looks like the cubes or the columns. Can you think of any organ in your body that would allow for a huge amount of stretch? Huge, huge amount. Something that might be able to accommodate five, six hundred milliliters of something. Veins. Huh? Veins. Huh? Yeah, vascular. Bladder? Bladder. <laughs> Your bladder. <laughs> you go get that big gulp, drink that big gulp, a little bit, and drink some more, and then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, that was interesting. You've taken the bladder that was flat, filled it up, and depending on how much your bladder can accommodate, okay? Norm is usually about 500 milliliters, okay? Depending on what it can accommodate, and then you go, you urinate, and boom, it goes back to being flat. And because of doing this, it's called transitional epithelium because the cells go from looking what looks like fried eggs to being stretched and having this cube to column look to them. So you find it in the ureters and the bladder, which is kind of cool. For the function, now, let me have your full attention right now. Simple. One layer. Excellent for diffusion. All right, let's stop right there. Diffusion is defined as being what? Movement, uh, huh? What? Movement of particles. Think about sugars, salts, amino acids, fats. Movement of particles from the area of high concentration to low concentration. This is going to be the cell type that is present for diffusion of gases. Where would diffusion of gases occur? The, the lungs. Huh? The alveoli. All right. At the alveoli. How about filtration of blood? Kidneys. Kidneys. Secretion. This would also be, this could be like the uh, areas of the pancreas. It could be um, sweat, oil, cerumen, that sort of thing. Absorption, what you might find in the intestines. Now, terminology tells you a major part of this right here. What term is important in that one phrase right there? Simple. Because simple is telling you